Chapter 1, Our Picture of the Universe Introduction to the Universe's Mysteries Stephen Hawking begins the first chapter by setting the stage for the book's exploration of cosmic phenomena. He introduces the reader to the profound questions humanity has asked about the nature of the universe throughout history. This chapter is both a historical overview and a philosophical reflection on our evolving understanding of the cosmos. Historical Models of the Universe Ancient Greek Perspectives Hawking starts with ancient Greek philosophers, such as Aristotle and Ptolemy, who proposed early models of the universe. Aristotle envisioned a geocentric, earth-centered, universe with celestial spheres revolving around the earth. Ptolemy further refined this model in the 2nd century AD with his detailed geocentric system, which included epicycles to account for the observed irregularities in planetary motion. The Copernican Revolution The narrative then shifts to the Renaissance and the revolutionary work of Nicolaus Copernicus. In the 16th century, Copernicus proposed the heliocentric, sun-centered, model, which placed the sun at the center of the universe and the earth and other planets orbiting around it. This model dramatically altered humanity's perspective on its place in the cosmos. Galileo and Kepler's Contributions Hawking highlights the contributions of Galileo Galilei and Johannes Kepler. Galileo's telescopic observations provided empirical evidence supporting the heliocentric model. He discovered the phases of Venus and the moons of Jupiter, which contradicted the geocentric model. Kepler, using Tycho Brahe's detailed observational data, formulated his three laws of planetary motion, which described the elliptical orbits of planets around the Sun. Newton's laws and the universal gravitation. The chapter progresses to Sir Isaac Newton and his monumental contributions in the 17th century. Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation provided a mathematical framework for understanding the forces governing planetary motion. His work demonstrated that the same physical laws applied to both celestial and terrestrial bodies, unifying our understanding of the universe. The advent of modern physics. Hawking discusses the advent of modern physics and the limitations of Newtonian mechanics in explaining certain phenomena. The 19th and early 20th centuries saw the development of new theories that expanded our understanding of space and time. Einstein's theory of relativity. The chapter introduces Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, which revolutionized our concept of space and time. Special Relativity, published in 1905, showed that space and time are intertwined in a four-dimensional continuum. General Relativity, published in 1915, extended this idea to incorporate gravity as a curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy. Einstein's theories provided a new framework for understanding cosmic phenomena and laid the groundwork for modern cosmology. The Big Bang and Expanding Universe Hawking concludes the chapter by introducing the concept of the expanding universe and the Big Bang theory. The observation by Edwin Hubble in the 1920s that distant galaxies are moving away from us led to the realization that the universe is expanding. This discovery supported the Big Bang theory, which posits that the universe began from an extremely hot and dense state approximately 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since. Summary and Reflection in reflecting on the progress made from ancient Greek models to modern cosmology, Hawking emphasizes the profound changes in our understanding of the universe. He underscores the importance of scientific inquiry and the ongoing quest to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos. Conclusion The chapter sets a historical and philosophical foundation for the book. It illustrates how humanity's picture of the universe has evolved over millennia highlighting the key figures and theories that have shaped our current understanding of the cosmos. This detailed narrative provides a comprehensive overview of the first chapter of The Brief History of Time, capturing its historical context and the development of scientific ideas about the universe. Chapter 2. Space and Time Introduction to Space and Time in this chapter, Stephen Hawking delves into the fundamental concepts of space and time, exploring how our understanding of these dimensions has evolved. The chapter builds on the historical context provided in the first chapter, introducing new concepts that challenge and expand our perception of the universe. Newtonian Mechanics and Absolute Space Hawking begins by discussing Isaac Newton's views on space and time. 
according to Newtonian mechanics, space and time were considered absolute and independent entities. Space was seen as a three-dimensional stage where events occurred, and time was a separate, linear continuum that ticked away uniformly. Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation were based on this concept of absolute space and time, providing a clear and predictable framework for understanding physical phenomena. Einstein's revolution, special relativity. The narrative then shifts to the early 20th century and Albert Einstein's groundbreaking theory of special relativity, published in 1905. Special relativity introduced the idea that space and time are not separate entities, but are intertwined in a four-dimensional continuum known as space-time. Einstein's theory demonstrated that the measurements of space and time are relative to the observer's state of motion. Key to this theory is the notion that the speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all observers, regardless of their relative motion. Time dilation and length contraction. Hawking explains two critical consequences of special relativity, time dilation and length contraction. Time dilation refers to the phenomenon where time appears to pass more slowly for an observer moving at high speeds compared to a stationary observer. Length contraction describes how objects appear shorter in the direction of motion when they are moving at relativistic speeds. These effects have been experimentally verified and are fundamental to our understanding of high-velocity phenomena. General relativity and the curvature of space-time. Building on special relativity, Einstein's theory of general relativity, published in 1915, expanded the concept of space-time to include gravity. General relativity posits that gravity is not a force acting at a distance, as Newton had described, but rather a curvature of space-time caused by the presence of mass and energy. Massive objects, like stars and planets, warp the fabric of space-time, and this curvature affects the motion of other objects. This theory provides a more comprehensive explanation of gravitational interactions and has been confirmed through various experiments and observations. The concept of space-time and black holes. Hawking introduces the idea that space-time can be curved in more complex ways than previously thought. He discusses how the geometry of space-time affects the paths of objects and light. The chapter also introduces the concept of black holes, regions of space-time where gravity is so intense that not even light can escape. Black holes represent an extreme case of space-time curvature, where our understanding of physics breaks down. The expansion of the universe and cosmology. The chapter touches on the implications of general relativity for cosmology. The discovery that the universe is expanding, as mentioned in the first chapter, is a direct consequence of Einstein's equations. The curvature of space-time affects the overall structure and evolution of the universe, leading to the development of models that describe its origin, growth, and eventual fate. The nature of time, the arrow of time. Hawking discusses the concept of the arrow of time, which refers to the direction in which time flows from past to future. This concept is related to the increase of entropy, or disorder, in a closed system, as described by the second law of thermodynamics. The arrow of time provides a way to distinguish between past and future and is essential for understanding the temporal aspects of physical processes. Philosophical Implications The chapter concludes with reflections on the philosophical implications of these scientific concepts. Hawking considers how the interconnectedness of space and time challenges our intuitive understanding of the universe. The idea that time and space are flexible and dependent on the observer's frame of reference prompts us to rethink our place in the cosmos and the nature of reality itself. Summary Chapter 2 of A Brief History of Time provides a detailed examination of the concepts of space and time, highlighting the revolutionary changes brought about by Einstein's theories of relativity. It explores how these concepts have transformed our understanding of the universe and laid the groundwork for modern cosmology. By integrating historical perspectives with contemporary scientific insights, Hawking offers a comprehensive view of how our perception of space and time has evolved. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the second chapter, exploring the fundamental ideas that shape our understanding of the universe. Chapter 3 – The Expanding Universe Introduction to the Expanding Universe in this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the concept of the expanding universe, a key discovery in modern cosmology that fundamentally changed our understanding of the cosmos. 
He explains how the universe's expansion supports the Big Bang theory and discusses its implications for the nature and evolution of the universe. Edwin Hubble's Observations Hawking begins by detailing Edwin Hubble's groundbreaking work in the 1920s. Hubble observed that distant galaxies were moving away from us, and their light was redshifted, meaning that the wavelength of light increased as the galaxies receded. This phenomenon was quantified by Hubble's law, which states that the velocity at which a galaxy recedes from us is proportional to its distance. This observation provided strong evidence that the universe is expanding. The Big Bang Theory Hawking introduces the Big Bang Theory as the prevailing explanation for the universe's expansion. According to this theory, the universe began from an extremely hot, dense state approximately 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since. The Big Bang model suggests that the universe started as a singularity, a point of infinite density and temperature, and has been cooling and expanding over time. Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation The chapter discusses the discovery of cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation, which provides further evidence for the Big Bang theory. In 1965, Arno Penchers and Robert Wilson detected a faint, uniform radiation permeating the universe. This radiation is a remnant of the early hot phase of the universe and serves as a snapshot of the universe when it was only about 380,000 years old. The uniformity and spectrum of the CMB support the idea that the universe originated from a hot, dense state. The formation of galaxies and large-scale structure. Hawking explains how the expanding universe led to the formation of galaxies and larger cosmic structures. As the universe cooled, matter began to clump together under the influence of gravity, forming stars, galaxies, and galaxy clusters. The distribution of these structures and their evolution can be studied through observations and simulations, providing insights into the formation and growth of the universe's large-scale structure. Theoretical Models of the Universe's Evolution The chapter explores various theoretical models of the universe's evolution. One model is the steady-state theory, which posits that the universe has always been expanding but maintains a constant average density by creating new matter as it expands. Although this theory was once a competitor to the Big Bang model, it has largely been abandoned in favor of the Big Bang theory, which better explains the observed evidence. Dark Matter and Dark Energy Hawking introduces the concepts of dark matter and dark energy, which are essential for understanding the universe's expansion. Dark matter is an invisible substance that does not emit or absorb light but exerts gravitational effects on visible matter. It helps explain the observed rotation curves of galaxies and the distribution of galaxy clusters. Dark energy, on the other hand, is a mysterious force driving the accelerated expansion of the universe. The nature of dark energy remains one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology. The future of the universe the chapter concludes by discussing possible scenarios for the future of the universe. Depending on the amount of dark energy and the overall density of the universe, various outcomes are possible. These include continued accelerated expansion, a potential big freeze where the universe grows colder and emptier, or a possible big crunch where the expansion reverses and the universe collapses back to a singularity. Summary Chapter 3 of A Brief History of Time provides a comprehensive overview of the expanding universe and its implications for cosmology. Hawking explains the key observations and theories that support the Big Bang model, discusses the formation of cosmic structures, and introduces the concepts of dark matter and dark energy. The chapter highlights how our understanding of the universe's expansion has transformed our view of its origins, evolution, and ultimate fate. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the third chapter, offering insights into the expanding universe and its significance in modern cosmology. Chapter 4 The Uncertainty Principle Introduction to Quantum Mechanics In this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the principles of quantum mechanics, a fundamental theory in physics that describes the behavior of particles on the smallest scales. The chapter focuses on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and its profound implications for our understanding of the physical world. The birth of quantum mechanics Hawking begins by explaining the historical context in which quantum mechanics emerged. 
In the early 20th century, classical physics failed to explain certain phenomena at the atomic and subatomic levels. This led to the development of quantum mechanics, a new framework for understanding the behavior of particles and waves. Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle The central concept of this chapter is Werner Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle, formulated in 1927. The principle states that it is impossible to simultaneously measure both the exact position and momentum of a particle with arbitrary precision. The more accurately one property is measured, the less accurately the other can be known. This inherent limitation is not due to experimental imperfections but is a fundamental feature of quantum systems. Implications of the Uncertainty Principle Hawking discusses the philosophical and practical implications of the Uncertainty Principle. It challenges the classical notion of determinism, which assumes that if we know all initial conditions of a system, we can predict its future behavior with certainty. Quantum mechanics, however, introduces an element of probabilistic uncertainty at the microscopic level. This principle implies that at the quantum level, the universe is governed by probabilities rather than certainties. Wave-particle duality the chapter also addresses the concept of wave-particle duality, which is closely related to the uncertainty principle. Quantum objects, such as electrons and photons, exhibit both particle-like and wave-like properties depending on the experimental setup. This duality is central to understanding phenomena like interference and diffraction. The role of observation Hawking explains how the act of observation affects quantum systems. According to quantum mechanics, particles do not have definite properties until they are measured. This leads to the concept of wave function collapse, where the act of measuring a particle forces it into a specific state from a range of possible states. The observer's role in determining the outcome introduces a fundamental link between consciousness and physical reality. Quantum tunneling Hawking introduces the phenomenon of quantum tunneling, which occurs when particles pass through energy barriers that would be insurmountable according to classical physics. This effect has practical applications, such as in tunnel diodes and nuclear fusion, where particles tunnel through barriers to achieve reactions or conduct electrical current. Quantum mechanics and relativity The chapter touches on the challenges of reconciling quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of relativity. Quantum mechanics governs the behavior of particles on the smallest scales, while relativity describes the behavior of objects on large scales. One of the major goals of theoretical physics is to develop a unified theory that integrates both quantum mechanics and relativity, often referred to as quantum gravity. Philosophical considerations Hawking reflects on the philosophical implications of quantum mechanics. The uncertainty principle and the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics challenge classical notions of reality and causality. These ideas have led to various interpretations of quantum mechanics, including the Copenhagen interpretation, many worlds interpretation, and others, each offering different perspectives on the nature of reality. Summary Chapter 4 of A Brief History of Time provides a detailed examination of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and its implications for quantum mechanics. Hawking explains how this principle challenges classical determinism and introduces a probabilistic view of the microscopic world. The chapter also addresses related concepts such as wave-particle duality, quantum tunneling, and the ongoing quest to reconcile quantum mechanics with relativity. By exploring these fundamental ideas, Hawking sheds light on the profound changes in our understanding of the physical universe. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the fourth chapter, offering insights into the principles of quantum mechanics and their impact on our perception of reality. Chapter 5, Elementary Particles and the Forces of Nature Introduction to Fundamental Particles In this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the basic building blocks of the universe, elementary particles, and the fundamental forces that govern their interactions. He explains how these particles and forces combine to form the diverse array of matter and phenomena observed in the universe. The Standard Model of Particle Physics Hawking introduces the standard model of particle physics, which describes the fundamental particles and their interactions. The standard model categorizes particles into two main groups, fermions and bosons. Fermions, the building blocks of matter. 
Fermions are the basic constituents of matter and are divided into two categories. Quarks, quarks are the fundamental particles that make up protons and neutrons. There are six types of quarks, up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. Quarks combine to form hadrons, such as protons, composed of two up quarks and one down quark, and neutrons, composed of one up quark and two down quarks. Leptons, leptons are another category of fermions and include particles such as electrons, muons, and tau particles, as well as their associated neutrinos. Electrons are crucial for forming atoms and molecules, while neutrinos are nearly massless and interact weakly with other matter. Bosons, the force carriers. Bosons are particles that mediate the fundamental forces of nature. Each force is associated with a different boson. Photon, the photon is the carrier of the electromagnetic force, which governs the interactions between charged particles. It is responsible for phenomena such as light, electricity, and magnetism. Gluon, gluons mediate the strong nuclear force, which holds quarks together within protons and neutrons and binds protons and neutrons together within atomic nuclei. W and Z bosons, the W and Z bosons mediate the weak nuclear force, which is responsible for radioactive decay and other weak interactions between particles. Higgs boson, the Higgs boson is associated with the Higgs field, which gives particles their mass. The discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012 was a major milestone in confirming the mechanism that explains why particles have mass. The Four Fundamental Forces Hawking discusses the four fundamental forces of nature which govern the interactions of particles. Gravitational force, described by Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity is the force of attraction between objects with mass. It is the weakest of the four forces but has an infinite range. Electromagnetic force, this force acts between charged particles and is responsible for electric and magnetic interactions. It is much stronger than gravity and has an infinite range. Strong nuclear force, the strong force binds quarks together to form protons and neutrons and holds protons and neutrons together in atomic nuclei. It is the strongest of the four forces but operates over very short distances. Weak nuclear force, the weak force is responsible for processes such as beta decay and other forms of particle transformation. It is weaker than the strong force but plays a crucial role in particle physics. Grand unified theories and supersymmetry. Hawking explores the concept of grand unified theories, guts, which aim to unify the strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces into a single theoretical framework. These theories propose that at very high energies, the distinct forces merge into a single force. Supersymmetry is another theoretical concept that extends the standard model by proposing a correspondence between fermions and bosons. Supersymmetry predicts the existence of superpartners for each particle, potentially addressing some of the limitations of the standard model. The search for a theory of everything. The chapter concludes with a discussion of the quest for a theory of everything, TOE, which aims to unify all four fundamental forces, including gravity, into a single framework. Such a theory would reconcile quantum mechanics with general relativity and provide a comprehensive understanding of all physical phenomena. Summary Chapter 5 of A Brief History of Time provides an in-depth examination of the elementary particles and forces that constitute the universe. Hawking explains the standard model, describing fermions, bosons, and the fundamental forces they mediate. The chapter also explores advanced theoretical concepts, such as grand unified theories and supersymmetry, and highlights the ongoing search for a unified theory that could explain all aspects of nature. Through these discussions, Hawking offers insights into the fundamental structure of the universe and the challenges of modern physics. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the fifth chapter, focusing on the basic building blocks of matter and the forces that govern their interactions. Chapter 6 Black Holes Ain't So Black Introduction to Black Holes In this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the concept of black holes, their properties, and their significance in modern physics. He delves into the paradoxes and insights associated with black holes and discusses how our understanding of these enigmatic objects has evolved. 
Formation and Structure of Black Holes Hawking begins by explaining the basic properties of black holes. A black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. The boundary of this region is known as the event horizon. Once matter crosses the event horizon, it is inexorably pulled towards the singularity at the center, where density becomes infinite and the known laws of physics break down. The singularity. The singularity is a point of infinite density and zero volume at the core of a black hole. According to general relativity, this is where all the mass of the black hole is concentrated. However, the singularity represents a breakdown of our understanding of physics, as the equations of general relativity cannot describe conditions at such extremes. The nature of the singularity remains one of the major unsolved problems in theoretical physics. Hawking radiation Hawking introduces his groundbreaking concept of black hole evaporation, known as Hawking radiation. In 1974, Hawking proposed that black holes are not completely black but emit radiation due to quantum effects near the event horizon. This radiation results from the creation of particle-antiparticle pairs near the event horizon, with one particle falling into the black hole and the other escaping to infinity. Over time, this process leads to the gradual loss of mass and energy by the black hole, causing it to shrink and eventually evaporate. Information Paradox the chapter addresses the black hole information paradox, a significant issue arising from Hawking's theory. According to quantum mechanics, information about the physical state of particles cannot be destroyed. However, if a black hole evaporates completely, the information contained within it seems to be lost, contradicting quantum principles. This paradox has led to intense debates and research, with various proposed resolutions, including the idea that information might be preserved in subtle correlations in the Hawking radiation or within a remnant. Black holes and the nature of space and time. Hawking discusses how black holes challenge our understanding of space and time. The intense curvature of space-time near the event horizon creates a region where traditional concepts of space and time break down. The study of black holes provides insights into the nature of gravity, quantum mechanics, and the fundamental structure of space-time. Cosmic horizons and the role of black holes. The chapter also explores the role of black holes in the universe. Black holes play a crucial role in the formation and evolution of galaxies and can act as cosmic laboratories for testing fundamental theories. The study of black holes also helps us understand cosmic horizons, boundaries beyond which information cannot escape, which are related to the concept of the event horizon. The future of black hole research. Hawking concludes with a discussion of the future of black hole research. Advances in observational techniques, such as the Event Horizon Telescope, which captured the first image of a black hole's event horizon in 2019, offer new opportunities to test theories and deepen our understanding of these enigmatic objects. Ongoing research aims to resolve the information paradox and uncover the true nature of black holes. Summary Chapter 6 of The Brief History of Time provides a comprehensive exploration of black holes, their formation, properties, and the challenges they present to our understanding of physics. Hawking introduces the concept of Hawking radiation, discusses the black hole information paradox, and highlights the impact of black holes on our knowledge of space and time. The chapter offers insights into the fundamental questions raised by black holes and the ongoing efforts to resolve these mysteries. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the sixth chapter, focusing on the properties and significance of black holes in modern physics. Chapter 7, The Origin and Fate of the Universe Introduction to Cosmological Models In this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the origins and future of the universe, examining various cosmological models and the scientific theories that attempt to explain how the universe began and how it might evolve over time. The chapter integrates ideas from previous chapters to provide a comprehensive view of cosmology. The Big Bang Theory Hawking begins by revisiting the Big Bang Theory, which posits that the universe began from an extremely hot, dense state and has been expanding ever since. The Big Bang model explains the observed expansion of the universe, the cosmic microwave background radiation, and the distribution of galaxies. 
The theory suggests that the universe started from a singularity, a point where physical laws as we know them break down. The early universe and inflation. Hawking discusses the concept of cosmic inflation, which was introduced to address certain puzzles in the Big Bang model. Inflation theory proposes that the universe underwent an exponential expansion in its very early moments, smoothing out irregularities and explaining the uniformity of the cosmic microwave background. This rapid expansion would have occurred during the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang. The formation of structure. The chapter explains how the early universe's slight quantum fluctuations led to the formation of large-scale structures such as galaxies and galaxy clusters. The density variations from inflation eventually grew under the influence of gravity, leading to the formation of stars, galaxies, and other cosmic structures. Observations of the distribution of galaxies provide evidence for these early fluctuations and the subsequent evolution of the universe. The role of dark matter and dark energy. Hawking introduces the concepts of dark matter and dark energy, which are crucial for understanding the universe's evolution. Dark matter, an invisible substance that interacts gravitationally but not electromagnetically, influences the formation and distribution of galaxies. Dark energy, a mysterious force driving the accelerated expansion of the universe, affects its large-scale dynamics and ultimate fate. The possible fate of the universe. The chapter explores several scenarios for the future of the universe, depending on its overall density and the effects of dark energy. Possible outcomes include Continued expansion, big freeze if dark energy dominates and the universe continues to expand at an accelerating rate, it could lead to a big freeze scenario where the universe becomes increasingly cold and empty. Big crunch, if the density of the universe is high enough, the expansion could eventually slow down and reverse, leading to a big crunch where the universe collapses back into a hot, dense state similar to the initial singularity. Big rip, another possibility is the big rip, where the expansion accelerates to the point where galaxies, stars, planets, and eventually atoms are torn apart by the increasing rate of expansion. The Anthropic Principle Hawking discusses the Anthropic Principle, which suggests that the conditions of the universe are as they are because they allow for the existence of observers like us. The principle is often invoked to explain why the fundamental constants of nature are fine-tuned to support the existence of life. This idea raises philosophical questions about the nature of the universe and our place within it. The search for a unified theory. The chapter concludes with a reflection on the search for a unified theory that can explain the origin and fate of the universe. A theory of everything, TOE, would integrate all fundamental forces and particles into a single framework, providing a comprehensive understanding of the universe's past, present, and future. The quest for such a theory remains one of the central goals of theoretical physics. Summary Chapter 7 of Sir Brief History of Time, he provides a detailed exploration of the origin and fate of the universe, building on concepts from previous chapters. Hawking examines the Big Bang theory, cosmic inflation, the formation of cosmic structures, and the roles of dark matter and dark energy. The chapter discusses possible future scenarios for the universe and introduces the anthropic principle, reflecting on the search for a unified theory that could explain the universe's ultimate nature. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the seventh chapter, focusing on the scientific theories and models that describe the universe's origin, evolution, and potential future. Chapter 8, The Arrow of Time Introduction to the Concept of Time in this chapter, Stephen Hawking delves into the nature of time, exploring its different dimensions and the concept of the arrow of time. The chapter addresses why time appears to flow in one direction and how various physical theories explain this phenomenon. The Three Arrows of Time Hawking introduces the idea that time has multiple arrows, each representing different aspects of the directionality of time. The thermodynamic arrow, this arrow relates to the direction in which entropy increases. According to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy, or disorder, in a closed system tends to increase over time. This increase in entropy gives time its direction, as processes evolve from states of lower entropy to higher entropy. This is why we perceive time as moving forward, from past to future. The psychological arrow, the psychological arrow refers to our perception of time. 
humans experience time moving forward because we remember the past, but not the future. This psychological aspect of time is closely linked to the thermodynamic arrow, as our memory and cognition are influenced by the increase in entropy. The cosmological arrow, the cosmological arrow is related to the direction of time in the context of the expanding universe. As the universe evolves from a hot, dense state to its current state, the cosmological arrow indicates the direction of time in accordance with the overall expansion of the universe. The second law of thermodynamics. Hawking discusses the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the total entropy of an isolated system always increases over time. This law is crucial for understanding the thermodynamic arrow of time. The concept of entropy provides a statistical measure of disorder and helps explain why certain processes, such as the melting of ice or the mixing of gases, are irreversible. The beginning of time and the Big Bang The chapter explores the implications of the Big Bang theory for the arrow of time. The Big Bang represents a state of extremely low entropy, which marks the beginning of time as we understand it. As the universe evolved from this initial state, entropy increased, giving time its forward direction. The concept of time being linked to the universe's evolution from a singularity is central to understanding the origin of time. Time's relationship with space. Hawking examines how time is intertwined with space in the framework of general relativity. Time and space are part of the four-dimensional space-time continuum, where time is treated as a dimension similar to spatial dimensions. The curvature of space-time, influenced by mass and energy, affects the passage of time. This relationship challenges our intuitive understanding of time as a separate, linear progression. The problem of time reversal. The chapter addresses the question of time reversal and its implications for physical laws. Many fundamental physical laws, such as those governing the motion of particles or electromagnetic fields, are time-symmetric, meaning they do not change if time is reversed. However, the arrow of time, driven by increasing entropy, creates an asymmetry in our experience of time. The role of quantum mechanics. Hawking discusses the role of quantum mechanics in understanding the arrow of time. Quantum mechanics introduces probabilistic elements into physical processes, but it also raises questions about time symmetry at the quantum level. The interplay between quantum mechanics and thermodynamics is crucial for developing a comprehensive understanding of time. The search for a unified theory. The chapter concludes with a reflection on the search for a unified theory that integrates time with other fundamental aspects of physics. A theory of everything, TOE, would need to reconcile the thermodynamic, psychological, and cosmological arrows of time within a unified framework. Such a theory would provide a deeper understanding of time and its role in the universe. Summary Chapter 8 of The Brief History of Time offers an in-depth exploration of the concept of time and its various dimensions. Hawking examines the different arrows of time, including the thermodynamic, psychological, and cosmological arrows, and discusses their implications for our understanding of the universe. The chapter also addresses the relationship between time and space, the problem of time reversal, and the role of quantum mechanics. Through these discussions, Hawking provides insights into the nature of time and the quest for a unified theory that integrates time with other fundamental aspects of physics. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the eighth chapter, focusing on the complexities and dimensions of time as understood through modern physics. Chapter 9 The Nature of the Universe Introduction to the Nature of the Universe In this chapter, Stephen Hawking examines the fundamental nature of the universe, exploring the principles that govern its structure and evolution. He builds on previous discussions of cosmology, quantum mechanics, and the nature of time to provide a comprehensive view of the universe's characteristics. The Principle of Mediocrity Hawking begins by discussing the principle of mediocrity, which suggests that Earth and its inhabitants are not in a privileged or special position in the universe. This principle implies that the laws of physics and the conditions we observe on Earth are not unique but rather representative of the universe as a whole. The principle of mediocrity supports the idea that the universe is governed by universal laws that apply everywhere. The Role of Symmetry the chapter explores the concept of symmetry in physics, which refers to the invariance of physical laws under certain transformations. 
symmetries play a crucial role in understanding the universe's structure and behavior. For example, the symmetry between space and time is central to general relativity, while gauge symmetries are fundamental to particle physics. The Anthropic Principle Hawking revisits the Anthropic Principle, which suggests that the universe's fundamental constants and conditions are finely tuned to allow for the existence of observers like us. The Anthropic Principle is often used to explain why certain physical parameters are just right for life. It raises philosophical questions about the nature of the universe and our place within it. The Quest for a Unified Theory The chapter discusses the ongoing quest for a unified theory that can explain all fundamental forces and particles within a single framework. A theory of everything, TOE, would integrate general relativity, quantum mechanics, and all known interactions into a cohesive model. Hawking emphasizes that finding such a theory is one of the primary goals of modern physics. The Role of Observations Hawking highlights the importance of observations in shaping our understanding of the universe. Advances in technology and observational techniques, such as telescopes and particle accelerators, have provided valuable insights into the universe's structure and the fundamental forces at play. Observations help test theoretical predictions and refine our models of the universe. The concept of the multiverse The chapter explores the idea of the multiverse, which suggests that our universe might be just one of many universes in a larger multiverse. The multiverse theory proposes that different regions of space could have different physical laws and constants. While speculative, the concept of the multiverse provides a broader context for understanding the universe's properties and the conditions necessary for life. The nature of space and time. Hawking revisits the nature of space and time, discussing how they are intertwined in the framework of general relativity. Space and time form a four-dimensional continuum, and the curvature of this continuum is influenced by mass and energy. Understanding the nature of space and time is crucial for developing a comprehensive theory of the universe. The Future of Cosmology The chapter concludes with a reflection on the future of cosmology and theoretical physics. As our understanding of the universe continues to evolve, new theories and discoveries will shape our view of the cosmos. Hawking emphasizes the importance of continued research and exploration in unraveling the universe's mysteries. Summary Chapter 9 of A Brief History of Time provides a detailed examination of the nature of the universe, integrating concepts from cosmology, quantum mechanics, and the nature of time. Hawking discusses the principle of mediocrity, the role of symmetry, the anthropic principle, and the quest for a unified theory. He explores the concept of the multiverse and the nature of space and time while reflecting on the future of cosmology. The chapter offers a comprehensive view of the universe's fundamental properties and the ongoing efforts to understand its nature. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the ninth chapter, focusing on the key concepts and theories that describe the universe and its underlying principles. Chapter 10, Wormholes and Time Travel Introduction to Wormholes and Time Travel in this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the intriguing concepts of wormholes and time travel, examining their theoretical foundations and implications. These concepts challenge our understanding of space-time and offer fascinating possibilities for exploring the universe. Wormholes, Theoretical Foundations Hawking introduces wormholes, hypothetical tunnels through space-time that could connect distant regions of the universe. Wormholes arise from the equations of general relativity, which describe how mass and energy warp space-time. A wormhole could potentially allow for faster-than-light travel between two points, circumventing the limitations imposed by the speed of light. The structure of wormholes Wormholes are characterized by their throat, a tunnel-like structure connecting two mouths situated at different points in space-time. In theory, traveling through a wormhole could enable instantaneous movement between distant locations. However, maintaining a stable wormhole requires hypothetical exotic matter with negative energy density to counteract the gravitational forces that would otherwise cause it to collapse. Time travel, theoretical possibilities. Hawking explores the concept of time travel, which involves moving backward or forward in time. 
according to general relativity, certain solutions to Einstein's equations suggest the possibility of closed timelike curves, CTCs, which could theoretically allow for time travel to the past. These solutions often involve exotic structures like rotating black holes or wormholes. The Grandfather Paradox The chapter addresses the famous Grandfather Paradox, a thought experiment that highlights potential contradictions in time travel. The paradox arises when a time traveler prevents their own grandfather from meeting their grandmother, thereby preventing their own birth. This creates a logical inconsistency, raising questions about the feasibility of time travel and the nature of causality. The Chronology Protection Conjecture Hawking introduces the chronology protection conjecture, which posits that the laws of physics prevent time travel to the past to avoid paradoxes and inconsistencies. According to this conjecture, any attempts to create closed time-like curves or travel back in time would be thwarted by physical mechanisms that preserve causality and prevent paradoxical situations. The Role of Quantum Mechanics The chapter discusses how quantum mechanics might influence the feasibility of time travel. Quantum effects could potentially play a role in stabilizing wormholes or preventing paradoxes. For example, quantum fluctuations might prevent the formation of closed timelike curves or alter the behavior of exotic matter required for wormholes. Experimental evidence and observations Hawking acknowledges that there is currently no experimental evidence for wormholes or time travel. These concepts remain theoretical and are subject to ongoing research and debate. Advances in observational techniques and theoretical models may provide new insights into the feasibility of these ideas in the future. Implications for the nature of reality The chapter concludes with a reflection on the broader implications of wormholes and time travel for our understanding of reality. These concepts challenge traditional notions of space, time, and causality, prompting us to rethink our perceptions of the universe. Exploring the possibilities of wormholes and time travel can offer valuable insights into the fundamental nature of space-time and the limits of our scientific knowledge. Summary Chapter 10 of The Brief History of Time delves into the fascinating concepts of wormholes and time travel. Hawking explores the theoretical foundations of wormholes, their structure, and the potential for faster-than-light travel. He examines the concept of time travel, the grandparent paradox, and the chronology protection conjecture. The chapter also discusses the role of quantum mechanics and the lack of experimental evidence for these ideas. Through these discussions, Hawking highlights the challenges and implications of exploring these extraordinary possibilities. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the tenth chapter, focusing on the theoretical aspects of wormholes and time travel, their implications for our understanding of space-time, and the broader questions they raise. Chapter 11, The Unification of Physics Introduction to the Unification of Physics In this chapter, Stephen Hawking explores the quest for a unified theory in physics, an overarching framework that integrates all fundamental forces and particles into a single, cohesive model. This quest represents one of the central goals of modern theoretical physics. The Need for Unification Hawking begins by explaining why unification is essential for understanding the universe. Currently, physics is divided into different theories for different fundamental forces, general relativity describes gravity, while quantum mechanics governs the other three forces, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. A unified theory would reconcile these disparate frameworks into a single theory that can explain all physical phenomena. The theory of relativity. The chapter revisits Einstein's theory of relativity, which successfully unifies space and time into a single framework of space-time. General relativity describes gravity as the curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy, providing a profound understanding of gravitational interactions and cosmic phenomena. However, general relativity does not incorporate the principles of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics and particle physics Hawking discusses quantum mechanics, which describes the behavior of particles at the smallest scales. Quantum mechanics has been incredibly successful in explaining particle interactions and has led to the development of the standard model of particle physics. The standard model unifies the electromagnetic, weak, and strong nuclear forces, but does not include gravity. The standard model 
the standard model categorizes all known fundamental particles and their interactions. It includes quarks, leptons, and gauge bosons, which mediate the fundamental forces. While the standard model has been successful in experimental predictions, it does not address gravity or the integration of all forces into a single theory. Grand Unified Theories, GUTS Hawking explores grand unified theories, GUTS, which aim to unify the three non-gravitational forces of the standard model. GUTS propose that at extremely high energies, the electromagnetic, weak, and strong forces merge into a single force. However, GUTS have yet to be experimentally confirmed, and the quest for a GUT continues. The Search for a Theory of Everything, TOE the ultimate goal of unification is to develop a theory of everything, TOE, that includes all fundamental forces, including gravity. A TOE would integrate general relativity and quantum mechanics into a single framework, providing a complete description of the universe. Various approaches, such as string theory and loop quantum gravity, are being explored as potential candidates for a TOE. String theory Hawking discusses string theory, a leading candidate for a TOE. String theory posits that fundamental particles are not point-like objects, but rather one-dimensional strings vibrating at different frequencies. These strings can represent different particles and forces, potentially unifying them within a single theoretical framework. String theory also suggests the existence of additional spatial dimensions beyond the familiar three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Loop quantum gravity. Another approach to unification is loop quantum gravity, which seeks to quantize spacetime itself. Unlike string theory, loop quantum gravity does not require extra dimensions but focuses on the discrete nature of spacetime. It aims to reconcile general relativity with quantum mechanics by describing spacetime as a network of loops at the Planck scale. The future of unification. The chapter concludes with a reflection on the future of unification and the challenges that remain. Despite significant progress, a complete TOE has not yet been achieved. Ongoing research and experimentation are crucial for advancing our understanding and potentially discovering a unified theory that can fully describe the fundamental nature of reality. Summary Chapter 11 of A Brief History of Time delves into the quest for the unification of physics, exploring the need for a single framework that integrates all fundamental forces and particles. Hawking discusses the theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, and the standard model, as well as grand unified theories, guts, and the search for a theory of everything, TOE. He examines string theory and loop quantum gravity as potential candidates for unification and reflects on the future of this ongoing quest. The chapter provides a comprehensive overview of the efforts to unify physics and the challenges involved in achieving a complete theory. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the 11th chapter, focusing on the pursuit of a unified theory that encompasses all fundamental aspects of physics and the various approaches being explored. Chapter 12, Conclusion Summary of Key Concepts in the concluding chapter of A Brief History of Time, Stephen Hawking reflects on the central themes and insights presented throughout the book. He summarizes the key concepts of cosmology, the nature of time, and the quest for a unified theory, emphasizing the progress made in understanding the universe and the mysteries that remain. The Nature of the Universe Hawking reiterates the importance of understanding the universe's fundamental nature. He reviews the Big Bang theory, cosmic inflation, and the expansion of the universe, highlighting how these concepts have shaped our understanding of the cosmos. The chapter emphasizes the interconnectedness of space, time, and the fundamental forces, illustrating how they are woven into the fabric of the universe. The role of observation and theory. Hawking emphasizes the crucial role of both observation and theoretical models in advancing our knowledge. Observational techniques, such as telescopes and particle accelerators, have provided valuable data that support theoretical predictions and refine our models of the universe. The interplay between theory and observation drives scientific progress and deepens our understanding of the cosmos. The quest for a unified theory. The chapter underscores the ongoing quest for a unified theory that can integrate all fundamental forces and particles into a single framework. 
Hawking discusses the significance of theories like string theory and loop quantum gravity, which aim to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics. He highlights the challenges and potential breakthroughs in the search for a theory of everything, TOE, and the impact it would have on our understanding of the universe. The nature of time. Hawking reflects on the complex nature of time and its various dimensions. He reviews the different arrows of time, thermodynamic, psychological, and cosmological, and their implications for understanding the flow of time and its direction. The chapter revisits the concept of time travel and the theoretical possibilities it presents, acknowledging the limitations and speculative nature of these ideas. The implications for human understanding. Hawking explores the broader implications of the scientific discoveries and theories discussed in the book. He reflects on how these insights challenge our perceptions of reality and our place in the universe. The chapter emphasizes the profound impact of scientific understanding on human knowledge and the ongoing pursuit of answers to fundamental questions. The future of scientific exploration. The conclusion looks forward to the future of scientific exploration and discovery. Hawking acknowledges the limits of current knowledge and the potential for new theories and observations to expand our understanding. He emphasizes the importance of curiosity, creativity, and perseverance in the quest for knowledge and the exploration of the universe. The beauty of science. Hawking concludes with a reflection on the beauty and wonder of science. He expresses admiration for the elegance of the laws of physics and the profound insights they provide into the nature of reality. The chapter celebrates the human spirit of exploration and the quest for understanding the universe's deepest mysteries. Final thoughts. In the final paragraphs, Hawking expresses hope for continued scientific progress and the eventual discovery of answers to the fundamental questions about the universe. He encourages readers to embrace curiosity and wonder as they explore the mysteries of the cosmos. Summary. Chapter 12 of The Brief History of Time serves as a reflective conclusion to the book, summarizing key concepts and insights. Hawking revisits the nature of the universe, the quest for a unified theory, and the complex nature of time. He emphasizes the role of observation and theory in scientific progress, explores the implications for human understanding, and looks forward to future discoveries. The chapter celebrates the beauty of science and the spirit of exploration, concluding with a hopeful outlook on the pursuit of knowledge. This detailed narrative captures the essence of the concluding chapter providing a summary of the main themes and reflecting on the broader implications of the scientific ideas discussed throughout the book.